Hey everyone, welcome back. So uh, we just had our video on bag of words and towards the end of the bag of words video I mentioned that one of the great applications of bag of words is spam filtering. So for example, you get an email or text message that is not from one of your friends or family. It's from like a company trying to get you to buy something or someone scamming you. We want to design a system here using bag of words that's going to automatically filter those messages out or delete them, just not send them to you, put them in a different folder. So we're going to be using bag of words today and this is going to be kind of a pseudo code with me because I've written out uh, some of the pre-processing and the skeleton of the modeling of bag of words we're going to write. But we'll fill in the details and I'll explain to you everything I did. So by the way, the data set here comes from Kaggle. I will leave a link to that data set in the description below so you can freely download it for yourself. So first thing we're going to do is read in the data. So from that Kaggle link, you're going to want to grab a file called spam.csv. And I had to add this encoding tag because there, there are certain characters and uh, these are text messages, by the way. So there are certain characters in these text messages that aren't uniform. So we have to put a different encoding scheme. Now, the what comes next here is a little bit of pre-processing just because the columns were named V1 and V2 and I wanted to give them more descriptive names. So I called them spam and text instead. So this is just a simple two column data frame. In fact, instead of describing it, let me just show it to you. So first, let me describe the additional steps I did. Uh, I converted the spam column to binary. So initially it said the word spam or not spam. I converted that to true and falses instead, just so it'll be easier to do computations on that. I also converted everything to lowercase and removed punctuation. So this kind of crazy looking line here is doing exactly those two processing steps. And finally, I shuffled everything. So just so everything is randomized. So let's take our first look at the data. So if I do spam df, you can see it's a simple two column data frame that contains about 5,500 uh, texts. And we have either spam being false or true. And we have the text itself. And so we can uh, hopefully use bag of words on the text itself to determine whether or not this is a spam text message or a valid text message. Let's take a look at a couple examples of spam messages and a couple examples of non-spam ones just to kind of get our gears turning, see what they look like. So here's the first five spam messages. So for example, last chance, claim your so-and-so worth of discount vouchers, obviously seems like spam. Ringtone, club, great, new polys. So these are all clearly not something that your friends or any of your acquaintances would send you. This is clearly just messages you don't want sent to your phone. And here's the first five non-spam messages. They don't mean too much to me, but they don't look like malicious or trying to sell me anything, and they're, therefore they are non-spam messages. And so the next thing we'll do is split it up into a training and testing set. So we're going to just say that 70% is going to be reserved for training, and the 30% that remains will be reserved for testing. And we also print out this measure called frax spam words. I think the better name here would be frax spam texts. Okay. And this is simply going to be the fraction of texts that we have that are spam. And it's about 13%. So 13% of all the texts are spam and then the other 87% are not. So now the next step we're going to do is we need to use our training data. So that 70% of data that we reserve for training. We're going to use all of the texts in there and we're just going to pool all of the words together. So we don't even care if they came from the same text or not the same text. We're going to take all of those words from those 70% of texts that we have for training. And we're going to create two bags of words, as we saw in the bag of words video. We're going to create one bag of words for spam and one bag of words for non-spam. And these are the two bags of words exactly that we're going to use when we go on and code the modeling part. So there's actually not too much code here, but let me just break down because the couple lines I've written here, there's a couple of things going on. Maybe I should have split it up, but let me explain what's going on. So we start with our training spam data frame. That's the 70% of data that we reserved. And this part here is just grabbing all of the texts where it is spam. So we have a list of all of these texts that are spam. And the next thing we do is we join them together. So this Python syntax simply takes a bunch of uh, a list of strings and joins them into a massive string where each of the individual strings is separated using a space. So at this point, this thing I've highlighted here is just a massive string of all of the spam texts that we have in our training data. And then finally, we split that up again using the space symbol. So now what we have in this variable called train spam words is a list of strings, each of which is a word that came from a spam text. 
So, so far we have this big list of words and we do the exact same thing for the non-spam words. And then we get the common words. So we only want to consider words that appear both in the spam data and the non-spam data. The reason we want to do this is because if we have a word that doesn't occur in one of them but does occur in the other, it's a little bit more difficult for us to say that it's relatively more important to one than the other. Um, it's, it's just a little bit more tricky. So this is kind of a personal call, but what I'm going to do is say that we're going to say common words is the intersection of the set of words in the spam words and the set of words in the non-spam words. And then we create the bags of words themselves. So bag is a very kind of loose term, and to put it in more concrete terms in terms of Python, we're going to create two dictionaries, which is two key value pairs, one for the spam bag of words and one for the non-spam bag of words. And each dictionary's keys is going to be these common words, so the words that appear in both, and the values are going to be the fraction of the total words in the spam or non-spam, which is that word. So for example, let's see how we form up the train uh, spam bag of words first. So for every word in common words, so this is all the words we're considering, we're going to say that train spam bag of words at that entry, so with that key w, is going to be train spam words dot count w. So the first part, the numerator is saying count how many occurrences of this word w occurs in the spam words and divide that by the total number of words in spam words, so the length of that list. So that this fraction is exactly measuring what fraction of the spam words are this particular word right now. Then we go on to the next one, the next one, the next one, and we do that same thing for the uh, non-spam words. And now just to help you better visualize what's going on, let me print out uh, one of these dictionaries. So I'm gonna print out train spam bag of words, and you see that we have a bunch of words here like shows, song, karaoke, sound, and each number here is exactly the proportion of words from all of the spam texts, which are the words shows, or song, or karaoke, or sound. So that's exactly what you're looking at here. And now the last part, and the part where I haven't coded yet, so we're actually gonna code this part together, uh, or fill in some of the blanks at least, is that we're going to use these two bags of words to predict some mystery text. So a mystery text comes in, so we reserve this testing set, so we're gonna assume that we don't know those labels just yet. We're gonna read each of those texts, we're gonna parse the words from that, and we're gonna ask the question of, given that we have this certain text, what's the probability that it came from the spam bag of words? And if that is high, then we're gonna classify it as spam. If it's very low, we're gonna classify it as valid. And so here's a little bit of mathematics about how we're gonna do this, that's gonna help guide the way we code this. So we want this quantity which says probability of spam given some test text message such as urgent, please call this number. So this is spam, probably. And we know from the video we had on bag of words, or you can just see here for the first time that this is proportional to, using Bayes' theorem here, this is proportional to the reverse conditional probability. So this is urgent, please call this number given spam times the prior probability, which is probability of spam. And we can use the naive Bayes assumption, which is not super realistic, but it'll be fine for these purposes here. We're going to break up this conditional probability as probability of urgent, seeing the word urgent, given that it came from the spam bag of words, times the probability of seeing the word please, given it came from the spam bag of words, and so on and so on and so on. Of course, all multiplied together at the end by probability of spam. And that's the prior probability. And so because we're working with an actual computer system here, and the text messages could be arbitrarily long, and if you multiply a bunch of small probabilities together, you can send them to zero with uh, numerical precision issues. So instead, we're gonna take the log of these probabilities because maximizing or minimizing something is the same thing as maximizing or minimizing the log. And so if we take the log of the above, then we can split it up as the sum of logs, which is gonna be less prone to this numerical instability issue. So we're gonna have log of the quantity above, which is equal to the sum of the logs, as I said before. So log of probability of urgent given spam plus log of probability of please given spam plus dot 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 all the way to the end, log of probability of spam. So that's all the math we had to cover in this video. Just make sure that we can match up the math to the code we're about to write. So here's the function that's going to actually predict the text. So to be clear, t here is a list of words that came from some text. And what we're going to do is figure out if this list of words is likely spam or not spam. And so I've put in a couple fill in the blanks, these dot dot dots, and I put some comments so we can see what we're trying to get to. So the first thing is we, it's possible, it's actually kind of likely, 
that there's going to be some words in this list of words that never appeared in our training set at all. And so we don't really know what to do with them, and so we're going to filter out all those words from the get-go. So we're going to say here, we're going to say valid words are only W for W in T if W is in training spam bag of words. And I can either put training spam bag of words here, or I can put training non-spam bag of words here because they have the exact same keys. Remember, and the reason for that is because we only use the common words. So they're only working on the words that appeared in both the spam and non-spam uh, texts. Okay, so this way we have eliminated all of the words that never appeared at all in our training data because we don't really know what to do with those. Next, we're going to get the probabilities of each valid word showing up in the spam and non-spam bag of words. Uh, said in a different way, for every one of these valid words in the text that we're given, we are going to ask, what's the probability of seeing that word if it came from the spam bag of words? And that's exactly the probabilities here. So probability of urgent given spam, probability of please given spam, we're going to calculate those empirically now. And so the way we're going to do that, for example, for spam probabilities, is we're going to say training spam bag of words of W for W in valid words. Let's take a second and analyze this. So for every one of the valid words, W, we are going to get the training spam bag of words with the key W. And remember, the value associated to that key is exactly the proportion of words from the spam text that were attributed to that word W. So this is exactly the percentage or the fraction that we're after. And the line below is very much parallel it's just that here, instead of training spam bag of words, we have training non-spam bag of words. Because here we're asking, what's the probability of seeing that word uh, from the non-spam bag of words? And I have this verbose flag. Um, it'll be easier to see why I did that once we print out some examples. Um, but basically, this just prints out all the uh, measures that we've calculated so far. The next thing is we're going to calculate the spam score. Now, I just kind of made this word up. But what that word is, is exactly this sum of logarithms. The spam score is going to be the log of probability of urgent given spam plus a log of probability of please given spam, all the way down to the probability or log of the probability of spam itself. So that's the prior probability. And so the way we're going to do that, we're kind of just building this up as we go. Spam probabilities contains all of those probabilities themselves. And so we're going to add up the logs of them. So we're going to say that's going to be equal to the sum of np.log of w, or p rather, for p in this guy, spam probs. So let's take a second, make sure this makes sense. For every probability in spam probabilities, give me the log of it, and then add those all together. And of course, the only term I'm missing now is going to be np.log of this prior probability, which we conveniently stored in this uh, variable called fraction of spam texts. That's just the prior probability of being a spam message before even reading the message at all. So we're going to copy that guy, and we're going to paste that guy in here. And the non-spam score is going to be calculated very, very symmetrically. It's just that here we put non-spam probs, and here we put one minus fraction of spam texts, because we want to uh, have the fraction of messages that are not spam, which is simply just one minus the fraction of messages that are. And um, that's it. Uh, we print out the spam score and the non-spam score for the user to see, just so we can see exactly how this whole method is working behind the scenes. And then we return whether the spam score is greater than or equal to the non-spam score. Because remember, although we took the log, the logs are going to be monotonically related to the probabilities, so that if our spam score is bigger than the non-spam score, then we can classify this thing as spam. Otherwise, we're going to classify it as a valid text message. So. We coded it. Let's run it on a couple of test examples and see how it's working. So here is this text that says, urgent, call this number. So if I run it on this, then this tells me exactly how it's working. So the four words were urgent, call this number. The probability of seeing the word urgent from the spam data set was 0 0.003, which is much higher than the probability of seeing the word urgent from the non-spam data set, which is 0 0.000021. So the word urgent, non-surprisingly, is more related to spam messages. Call is also more related to spam messages. This doesn't really have a preference. Uh, number seems to be slightly more related to spam messages. I also have calculated the ratio here, which is just dividing the spam probability by the non-spam to get a better idea about how much more biased that word is towards the spam data set. So the word urgent is like heavily biased in the spam data set. 
and the word call is also biased and these other two are somewhat biased. And we see the spam score is negative 23, the non-spam score is negative 29. In this case, since the spam score is higher than the non-spam score, we classify this correctly as spam. Now here's the normal text message. Hey, do you want to go to a movie tonight? Same analysis here. So for example, I'm not gonna go through all of them. You can see these for yourself. But if you look at the ratios here, most, most of them are all less than one, which means that most of the words from this particular text message are more biased, more likely to occur in the non-spam data set. And so our conclusion at the end of the day is that this is not a spam text message. Let's just do two more just to get the hang of it. Here's one that says offer for unlimited money call now. Um, and we see that all these ratios are pretty high for the most part. And so we, we classify this as a spam. And let's, here's one more. Are you at class yet? Probably something your friend might have sent you, probably not a spam message. And so these ratios are relatively low, less than one. And so we classify this as non-spam. So on these four examples we made up, it seems to be doing well. But to really get a measure about how well it's doing, let's try it out on the remainder of the data, the 30% of data that we reserve for testing. And so we're going to apply this function that we wrote, this function called predict text to all of the texts in the testing set. We store those results in predictions and we calculate two uh, key measures. The first one is, I called it a recall here, but I wanna rename it just so it's more clear what it is. I'm gonna call it fraction uh, of spam messages correctly detected. Did I spell that right? Fraction of spam messages correctly detected. Okay, so what this is calculating is of all of the messages in the testing set that were spam, what fraction of them did our very simple system using bag of words correctly identify? And the answer is 92%. That's kind of crazy given how naive and simple of a method bag of words is. We didn't take into account the meaning of the words. We didn't take into account the order of the words. Simply just treating the words as a unordered a bag of words with frequencies, we were able to actually get a 92% of all spam messages correctly detected as spam. And the other key measure we care about in spam detection is the fraction of valid messages sent to spam. So people often say like, oh, did you get my email? Maybe you should check your spam. We wanna minimize the number of times that happens. So this is going to be a fraction of times where it was a valid message, but we accidentally classified it as spam. So we wanna keep this pretty low. And we find that using our method, it's 2%, which I think is acceptable for many cases. So, I mean, that's it. This is how you build a spam filter for emails or texts in Python. Um, I'll definitely make this code available to you. I'll link it below with my GitHub. And uh, hopefully you learned how to apply a simple method to bag of words to create a rather powerful spam classifier. All right, so see you next time.